Hello students, <clears throat> I am Dr. Harpreet and today we have with us our esteemed FRCS faculty, Dr. Ravinder Dimri. Uh, we will be talking about a very important topic of basic sciences, that is articular cartilage. Welcome sir, welcome to this platform, this today's module. Thank you, thank you Harpreet. Uh, so, uh, this is a bit dry topic um, uh, as a basic science, but uh, I think it is quite uh, important uh, Harpreet, uh, for MS exam or for people who are uh, practicing as a uh, consultant, why do you think we need to know about articular cartilage? Sir, so, uh, articular cartilage is an important topic because uh, we see a lot of patients who come to us with joint pathologies. Mm -hmm. So they have some articular degeneration, articular destruction. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, if we understand the basics of what happens to articular cartilage during the disease or uh, what is its uh, normal, what does a normal cartilage, uh, its features, its normal anatomy and then we can understand its pathophysiology, then make and we can uh, treat those patients Absolute, better. Absolutely. And, understand. And, and, and you see the uh, nowadays, a uh, lot of people playing sports and they come with these, <coughs> especially young people, it's a difficult situation how to deal with if you get a focal damage to the article cartilage. Not only they, we, we also, it's a very exciting phase at the moment regarding uh, understanding the uh, article cartilage anatomy and its injury and regeneration. Uh, especially osteoarthritis is one of the <coughs> main thing in orthopedics and we have uh, getting better and better with arthroplasty, but we are at the juncture whether uh, we thinking whether we can do something uh, different than arthroplasty. So it's, it's, it's an exciting field to know about articular cartilage, uh, how it works and if it uh, become pathologically, so how, how we can <coughs> halt its progress and, and, and deal with that. So that's, uh, and, and for exam, it is very important uh, questions asked in the exam. So we'll go through these uh, few things, the, uh, the anatomy, the function of articular cartilage, and then try to see the basics of a few diseases. Is that all right? Yes. Sir. Okay, so uh, first of all, <coughs> it's one of the cartilage. So there are a few cartilage and orthopedic surgeons come uh, across the highline cartilage or articular cartilage, which is the today's topic, which we'll discuss. But there are fibroelastic cartilage like we see in menisci. Uh, there are fibrocartilage which we see where the tendons and ligaments are inserted and problem of those uh, as an anthesopathies uh, we will see right here, <coughs> right you see in the uh, tendoaculus insertion tendonitis or tennis elbows and thing like that. So that, that will cover <coughs> some other time. We get elastic cartilage and we get physial cartilage again that uh, briefly we have discussed uh, in an enchondral ossification. But again, this will discuss uh, in one of the pediatric topic about physical injuries and how, 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 how that affects. But today's topic main, mainly is highline cartilage. Yes? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, highline cartilage, let's go. Okay. So, highline itself means a glass like cartilage. Yep. And uh, <coughs> it is, uh, it lines the uh, articular surface of synovial joint or diarthrogel joints. And its two main function is lubrication and shock absorption. With lubrication, it reduces fr friction. And uh, <coughs> so, so if you want to remember two main function, and we will, we will discuss that, how it achieved that function. Uh, and also at the very beginning, you need to know that uh, this articular cartilage is, is, a, is a unique tissue that it is avascular. So it got no vascularity, and we will see how it get its nutrition and how it repair if it damaged. So that's very important, it's a neural. So if you get uh, uh, some early uh, injuries to articular cartilage, you may not feel any pain till you till, till it gone deep to the bone. Uh, Alymphatic and it's non-immunogenic. So these are all uh, characteristics of articular cartilage. So let's go to the next. So from the slide, you yeah. need to remember that it's a avascular structure and a a neural structure. Very important, and the two main functions, as just sir just uh, told us to remember, is joint lubrication and shock absorption. Talking about the highland cartilage. Highland cartilage. So let's first uh, start with. What are the components or constituents of cartilage? As with any connective tissue, you can divide this into cellular and extracellular matrix. Yeah, 
Unfortunately for you, the only one cell, uh, the uh, cartilage has is chondrocytes. So cellular and extracellular matrix. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what are the extracellular matrix? They are mainly three, water, collagen, and proteoglycans. So water, collagen, and proteoglycan. So these are the three main components and cellular components, and we'll go into detail of this. So let's go to the first thing uh, uh, about these details. So if you see quantity-wise, the water is the main ingredients of art highland, articular, uh, highland cartilage. And as overall, it's about 70%, although in some layer, we'll go in detail, it could be as high as 80%. But the main constituent is water. Rest all is about 30%. Out, out of that 30%, the collagen is the next important thing, and then proteoglycans. And cell uh, consists very small, 5 to 10%. Yeah? So the main constituent is water, important thing. Yeah, and, yes, and, 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 and cell impo uh, only constitute a small portion of it. So, so let's talk about the cell in detail next. So chondrocytes, these are the only cell in it. Where does it come, the chondrocyte? It comes from the mesenchymal stem cell. If you remember our bone talk, we said that uh, the osteoblast also uh, come from mesenchymal, mesenchymal stem cells. So mesenchymal stem cell is, is, is a cell or a mother cell which can, if you induce it in one direction, it will form bone. If you induce in one direction, it can form uh, cartilage. If you induce in other direction, it can form uh, adipose. So it can form a lot of tissue, depend how you induce it. Yeah. So the chondrocytes are coming from mesenchymal uh, stem cells. They are quite, as I said, they're only 5 to 10 percent, so they're quite sparsely distributed in articles. They're not many uh, in, in terms of quantity, they're not, not many, but they've got very important function. The, all extracellular metrics you talk about, their manufacturing, their secretion, their maintenance, everything is done by these cells. Yeah? Yes, so sir. the function of uh, chondrocyte is to uh, maintain, uh, produce, maintain the extracellular metrics synthesis and, 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 and its maintenance. So that's uh, uh, all about chondrocytes. So next talk about the collagen. So we remember in the bone we said mainly type 1 collagen and in fact most of the tissue you talk uh, in, in, in orthopedics actually majority of them are type 1. So remember whatever is attached to the bone, ligament, tendons, uh, muscles, these are all mainly consist of type 1, yeah? Okay. And the way sometimes we tell a student is uh, bone has got o 1 in it, O-N-E, so type 1. Okay. Okay, so uh, in bone is type 1. But articular cartilage is mainly type 2. Where else do you think you can uh, find uh, art, uh, type 2 collagen in the body? No. Mm -hmm. So the other, uh, the second common is in the spine, the disc, and the nucleus pulposus. Okay. Yeah. So nucleus pulposus of a disc, although the annular fibrosis is the outer band which is attached to the bone, mm -hmm. is type one. Okay. But the but the middle bit, the nucleus pulposus, is is type one. So these are the main two places where you will find type two uh, cartilage. Yeah. Yes, so uh, uh, and, uh, let's so go for the next slide. What what are actually uh, collagen? So if you see under electron microscope, you can see these structures uh, like fibrils type structures. And if you then further go at molecular level, they are for, for forms there as a tropocollagen. Yeah. So you can see that if you if, if you go at molecular levels, these these are actually tropocollagen. You can say a unit of it. And what does then tropocollagen uh, consist of? It's called triple helix of alpha chains. So three alpha chains in a helix form. You don't need the detail which way it wind around. As long as you understand that the, these fibrils are consist of tropocollagen, which consists triple helix of alpha chain, that's enough for your uh, collagen uh, uh, microstructure. Uh, microstructure. What? How do? How? What is their function? So if you if if you think of them uh, like a stretchy band, they are actually very good for uh, for tensile strength. So if you keep stretching them, they will resist that. But if you put a compressive stretch uh, on on them, they almost crinkle and not very good. 
So for tensile strength, they are uh, quite good, not very good for compressive. They are weak in compression. And so we will discuss later on how does the articular cartilage get its compressive strength. So just remember here that the tensile strength is mainly achieved by collagen. Okay. Okay. So this, uh, the, uh, the second extracellular part we said, first we said collagen, second we said is proteoglycans. And we'll go a little bit uh, in detail about proteoglycans because proteoglycans are very important uh, in, in, for the fact that they are the main uh, constituents which attract water. And we, we will know that how important is the water uh, for articular cartilage function, both for lubrication and for shock absorption. So let's go to the next slide and see. So a lot of people in the exam get confused about proteoglycans uh, <coughs> when, when we ask, just tell us what is proteoglycan or sometime in the exam we'll give you a piece of paper and say draw it, yeah? So the word itself, PG, post protein glycans, it clearly says it consists of protein and it consists of glycan or sugar, okay? okay? So protein and the sugar. The, the sugar or the glycan parts are also sometimes we call glycoaminoglycans or GAG. Okay. So nothing but the uh, name for the type of sugar it has. So and the sugar, two type of sugar or sugar particle you will normally see is carotene and chondroitin sulfate. Okay. Okay. So uh, KS and CS are the uh, main sugar uh, portion uh, in, in your GAG. So now you understand the gag and the protein is proteoglycans hmm. yes? yes so gag plus protein become proteoglycans and this unit of gag plus protein which is proteoglycan is called agrican okay. okay quite often you can have just agrican in the in the articular cartilage but frequently actually you don't uh, you don't have just uh, units of agrican the agricans are attached to hyaluronic acid yeah so multiple agrican attached to hyaluronic acids then become a, 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 a very big molecule and we call that proteoglycan aggregates. Okay. Yeah. Or you can say a, 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 a polymolecular of hyaluronic acid. Yeah. So it's nothing but number of aggregate united with the uh, hyaluronic acid. So let's see the next slide and you'll get a bit more picture clear with this. So you see these are the sugar particles. These, these are, yeah. So okay. this uh, the, this uh, big one are the, are the chondroitin sulfate, yeah, and these are small one keratin sulfate, and this is attached to this protein, protein, and that's why they are PG, protein Protein and glycans, yeah. yeah. This is uh, can remain like this as a one unit, and what is the name of that unit? Will be called agricans. But the agrican attached to your hyaluronic acid through a little thing called uh, link protein. Okay. Then this become a big molecule and called proteoglycan mm -hmm. aggregate. Yeah. And this is a very important constituent of articular cartilage. So let's see the next slide. So very important, I think, uh, mm -hmm. uh, diagram mm -hmm. which will just help you uh, f uh, remember uh, what is the structure of your proteoglycans and this aggregate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so chondroitin sulfate and keratin sulfate. These are the sugars. The bigger ones and the smaller ones, these are attached in the middle to the proteins and these forming the uh, Agrican. uh, agricans. Mm -hmm. Then if they are attached to the hyaluronic acid, with the, this is the hyaluronic acid attached using the, through the link proteins, these make the main molecule. Main molecule. So, so uh, and they, uh, ag the, just agricans sometimes can be also separately so present, yeah. yeah. So, we'll, we'll go a bit more into detail of this. So, if you see in this slides, can you see an agrican there? Yes. Yeah. And this agrican attached with the link protein to the, the this thing. Uh -huh. And the sugars yeah. are the gags, yeah. Yes. And, and, and the protein. sugar with the protein become your proteoglycan. Okay. So, you got keratin sulfate here. You got chondroitin sulfate here. They, these are also together. We can call them sugar or gag. Yes. They 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 attach to the protein and become your agrican. And agrican attached to you become a big proteoglycan macromolecule. Yeah, or yeah. aggregates. Yeah. Yes. So that's clear. And these are then form just big chain. So this big chain attract. It's it's quite negatively charged. These sugar things. They attract a lot of cation and water with them. So if you go to the next slide. 
So next is we'll talk about the water and then we'll all club together and understand the structure again. So water is, uh, as we said, 70 to 80 percent. Yeah. So uh, depending on which layer you're talking about, and it, it is the it is the main constituents of articular cartilage. So because it is avascular structure, most of the metabolism, synovial fluid and the articular cartilage is happening through the water. So water is very important for survival of the articular cartilage and also important for its function, which we'll talk about later on, which is your lubrication and, and load, load sharing. Okay. So th this is the importance of the uh, water in it. So let's go next. Okay, so uh, th they are mainly uh, extra articular, so uh, extra cellular. So they're not inside the cell, very small amount. They are dispersed between these collagen and the polysec uh, proteoglycans. Okay. So that's where the uh, water is. So let's see the next slide and we'll get into a bit more detail. So if you see a detail of articular uh, cartilage, can you identify your uh, proteoglycans and collagen? Yes, these are the collagen yeah. fibrils. Uh -huh. These are the agricans yeah. and agricans attached here. This is the hyaluronic acid. So, the agricans attached here. Uh -huh. This is attachment link proteins. So yeah. these are my hyaluronic acid and the proteoglycans. Yeah, so that's attached. a macromolecule or aggregates. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and normally they are seen with the hyaluronic acid, but sometimes they can be separately Separate as agricans. Let's go next and fill it with the chondrocytes. You feel that? So if you got chondrocyte, you uh, cell, yeah, you got extracellular matrix, mm -hmm. which we said uh, consists of protoglycans and collagen. You all remember this, and in between you will have a lot of water, water all over, yeah. If you remember this, also that's enough, but uh, normally there's few other protein dispersed, and we don't know exactly at the moment what is the function of that, and you don't need to remember. If you remember these structures, that's all you need to about articular cartilage. Okay, let's go to next. So, coming to our uh, first slide, that articular cartilage is important to understand. So now we know what is the constituents of articular cartilage. We need to know how it functions. Yeah. So for that, we need to understand how it is topographically arranged, uh, so that we can understand its function better. So the next three or four slides, we'll talk about the arrangement of uh, articular cartilage in different layers. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so articular cartilage is actually arranged in layers, uh, and we'll we'll, uh, 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 we'll re-emphasize this with number of uh, next few slides. But to uh, start with, they consist of two main uh, uh, layers, calcified and non-calcified, okay? So you have calcified, and non-calcified. And this is separated by a very important uh, area called tide mark. So remember, you got calcified, non-calcified, separated by tide, mark. tide marks. The non-calcified then is further divided into three layers, superficial, middle, and deep. So superficial, middle, and deep. And the calcified is very close to your bone or subchondral bone. So you, you, you uh, let's go to the next slide and it'll become more clear. So if, if you see this uh, diagram, this is uh, trying to be in three dimensional and we'll make it simple in next two or three slides. So the superficial uh, uh, layer, middle layer, and the deep layer, and then there's a calcified layer and between the two is the tide mark. So can you show me the tide mark? Yeah, and this, excellent, and, and maybe this is better. Yeah, yes. so that's your tide mark and about a tide mark is non-calcified. Non-calcified. Yeah, and below is? Calcified. Calcified. And non-calcified then consists of these three, three layers. layers. One, superficial, two, middle, and, and deep. And three, yeah? Yes. And they've got few different names. We'll come to the next few slides. So let's go to the next one. So now this is a bit more diagrammatic or histological where you see it. And you can see here, this is your superficial layer, this is your middle layer, and this is your deep layer. And how do you identify in the exam or uh, or do you need to understand that in these layers, the collagen is uh, dispersed in a different way, the cells are different, uh, dispersed in different way, and proteoglycans is dispersed in different way. So you need to know that how is collagen arranged, how is the proteoglycan arranged, and how is the uh, cell arranged, and then how is water arranged in this, okay? Yeah, so let's uh, go for the next slide. 
So diagrammatically, if you see, if we, if we do one by one how they, they are arranged, can you see the collision arrangement? Yes, The sir. collision is almost parallel there. Yeah. yeah. And then in the middle layer, it becomes almost random. Yeah. And if you come to deeper layer, it's vertical. Yes. And in not only vertical, it crosses tide mark and then actually uh, attach, the, make it the, the non-calcified part get attached to the calcified part. So that's important for collision. Collision is also help in that attachment. But remember the tide mark is there. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you see the cells, the cells are flattened on the top there. Mm. Yeah. So this is superficial layer. In the middle, they have become a bit rounder now. But as you come down, not only become rounder, they arrange in the column. So that's how the pattern of the cell and the uh, and the collagen is. Gotcha. So go for the next. So in both uh, the extracellular or the collagen mm -hmm. and the cells, in the superficial layer, both are parallel. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the collagen is also parallel. The cells are also parallelly arranged. Yeah, but they're flattened. Flattened. Also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they become random, both the matrix uh, and the cellular part, they becoming random in the middle layer. Yeah, becoming and rounder. The, and they are becoming rounder, the cells. Yeah. Yeah. And in the deeper layer, they becoming vertically arranged and the cells have become almost round. Yeah, so, so what, what what is the structure we have not yet talked about? So talking okay. about the deeper, uh, the calcified we haven't talked about. Yeah, we, we, we will we'll come and to the that. And the mark. Uh, what we have not talked about is, is the proteoglycan, proteoglycan and water. water yeah? yes. We talked about the cell, we talked about, about the, the collagen. collagen, and we don't talked about the proteoglycan. So this is the simplest diagram you need to know in the exam. The easy to draw, easy to understand. So let us talk about cells in the superficial layers are? Flat. Flat. Parallel. The collagen are parallel, parallel, parallel. and sometimes they're crinkled. If you stretch it, it will become straight. Okay. Yeah. At the moment, we're showing it crinkled because it's it's collapsed. Yeah. Yes. So they're parallel. And proteoglycan, if you see from top to bottom layer, it's increasing in number. Okay. Yeah. So, so they, they there are few proteoglycan here. They mainly the collagen here on the top layer. Okay. Yeah. In the middle layers, everything is random. Yes. Yeah? And in lower layer, the cells are becoming columnar. Uh, the in the in columns, column, yeah. the the collagen is becoming vertical and going passing the tide Denmark. mark. And the protoglycan be becoming more and more. Yes. Yeah? So if you remember the simple diagram, and water is dispersed extracellular everywhere, and as you go up, the water also become more. But water has a special feature that it can change which layer it needs to go depending on. Uh, we'll talk about on the function requirement of it. So it can be suddenly become more on the top layer, or it can sometimes go into synovial fluid also and come back. Yeah. But more or less, it's uh, more in the upper layer. Upper layer than compared to uh, com uh, compared to lower layer because they are here the proteoglycans are tightly packed here. Okay, so you understand this? Mm. This is your tight mark. Yes. This is your calcified, mm. and then the bone subchondral bone. Yeah. So uh, you you understand the layering of the articular cartilage? Yes. yes. So let's go to the next one. And it's the same thing. Uh, it's a crowded slide. You don't need, to, but just to remember that sometimes people get confused, different names. So superficial layer is also called gliding layer or tangential layer or okay. superficial layer. Same name. Yeah. Okay. So intermediate is the <coughs> also called the tangential, tangential layer because that that's how it is arranged. Yeah. Mm. Tangential. So mm. intermediate layer uh, also is called transitional layer. Yeah. And deep layer also called radial layer. So radially yeah. means vertically arranged. Vertically arranged, yeah. So yes. there's few names and some you can get confused with. And then the tide mark and the calcified, mm -hmm. yeah. So th this was just to re-emphasize you the different layers. So can you now uh, understand the the constituents of the uh, cartilage and the layering of the cartilage? Do you want to repeat that? What are the constituents? Uh, so the constituents are the, the cellular and the extracellular part. Met, yeah. Cellular is the chondrocytes. Mm -hmm. The extracellular would be your proteoglycans, the uh, collagen, and the water. Water, and in between some non so other non-collagen protein, but not other, important. Uh, Non-important non proteins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Non-collagen, not... Non <laughs> <laughs> we don't know the importance. They may be most important in future. At the moment, we don't know the importance of them. So, yeah. non-collagen proteins. Mm -hmm. And then we have the layers uh, in which these are arranged. So, there are two parts of mm -hmm. the cartilage which we can say one is the non-calcified and the calcified. Mm -hmm. Between the two parts is your tide mark. Yes. And the non-calcified is also uh, can be uh, subdivided into three layers, mm -hmm. the superficial, middle and deep. Superficial layer, also known as the tangential layer, the gliding layer and the deeper layer is also known as the radial layer. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in the superficial layer the uh, chondrocytes are parallel uh, and the collagen is also parallel protoglycans are few good and the chondrocytes are flatter there excellent okay. The deeper layer, everything is random. Mm -hmm. the, Not deeper, the middle. The, the, sorry, middle layer, as we go deep, yeah. the middle layer is everything is random. Mm -hmm. uh, the proteoglycans are increased a bit. In the deeper layer, uh, the deep layer, uh, the chondrocytes have become round. They were a bit rounder in mm -hmm. the la middle layer, middle layer, but here they become, become round and they are arranged in vertical columns, so the radially. Mm -hmm. uh, the collagen is also, also arranged vertically and the proteoglycans are maximum here in the deep uh, layer. Abundant in the deep abundant layer. Yeah. Deep and the collagen also can cross stride mark to attach to the calcified That's part. Right. Yeah. And in between, I just reminded when you said non-important uh, of the uh, non-collagen non protein, protein, there are also some very important growth factors and other things, uh, the detail of which we don't know yet, and we're doing a lot of research in that. So we will have a little break, and then we'll go to function of it. Yeah? Okay. Okay? okay. Great. Thank you.